Hi there, in this short video we're going to walk and talk you through how to optimize a blog post and page using the Yoast SEO WordPress plugin. Now the reason I say WordPress or um, sorry, post or page is because the process is exactly the same. It is identical. So once you've learned how to optimize your on post or on page stuff, you can do the other post or pages. So don't get too hung up if this isn't a uh, page. Like I said, the process is identical. So let's get cracking. What we have here is a blog post um, called what is SEO and why is it important? And it's already been created. I've written it. I've already added an image to it. Um, if you want to know how to add images to your blog post, there's another uh, video here where you can learn that. But what I'm going to do is um, look through this because what, what the aim is with this website, with this page and with all pages is to target a particular phrase or series of words, um, which could be a little bit disjointed, not what we would call a phrase, so that the search engines will give you a reasonably good ranking for that individual page. What many people don't understand is that, this, that Google and the other search engines gives every single page uh, a ranking in its own right in its search uh, results. So whilst it used to be that we would SEO a whole site for a particular search term, now you can SEO the individual pages and posts for a search term and Google will give that item itself a ranking, a place in the search results. So it could well be that in time some of your posts and uh, your blog posts become more popular than the, the static pages and maybe even the home page of your website simply because it's well optimized for a phrase which people are looking for, which people are, people are putting into the search engine. So the idea behind this, this exercise is I'm going to try and SEO this um, post for the phrase what is SEO and I've already entered it right down here into the focus keyword in the uh, Yoast area. So this is what we're telling the Yoast, this is what we're, we're aiming at. Uh, the great news about it is that the Yoast SEO plugin will give you um, some pointers on what it thinks you should be doing to improve the SEO score uh, of your page or post. And again, this is identical for both pages and posts. So let's have a quick look at what it's telling us from the bottom. Right, you've never used this keyword before, very good. If you duplicate keywords on your website use, uh, 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 in, your, in Yoast, uh, it will warn you. It can be um, detrimental to your site if you overuse the same keyword or key phrase on different posts as a target keyword or phrase. Google may accuse your website of um, SEO or keyword spamming and then penalize you in their search engines. The text contains 351 words, which is great. The minimum recommended is usually 300. Typically, when we write blog posts these days, we're writing anywhere between 900 and 1200. Um, if your website copy or your blog post copy is engaging, people will read it, especially if it's useful and informative. So 300 is a minimum. Focus keyword appears in the URL for this page. Now let me explain what I mean here. When I copy, when I wrote in this uh, phrase, what is SEO and why is, it why is it important into here, and then move down into the editor area, WordPress automatically created the URL, the permalink, this is the URL. So this will be uh, on this particular website, www.dev.co.uk forward slash what is SEO and why is it important. Now this is the URL um, and you can edit this if you want to, but it's important to, to try and get your search phrase at the beginning of the URL wherever possible. And the same thing with your post title as well. But it automatically creates this URL based on what you've written in here. If you write nothing in here, or you still haven't yet thought of it, it will create a temporary URL which will just be just numbers. So bear that in mind. So let's OK that. So we've ticked a green box there. Got a green tick rather. The page title has a nice length. Yep, that's good. The SEO title contains the focus keyword, so we've just looked at that. And the first and the focus keyword appears in the first paragraph of the copy. So what we've got here is what is SEO is in the first paragraph. It's always a good idea to try and get that uh, in there and it's um, always good form, it's good for your SEO and it points it out that that's a good thing. So let's have a look at the other items that it's asking us to do 
and we'll go from the bottom to try and target these orange items and make them into green. So, no links appear on this page, consider adding some as appropriate. You could just simply um, add a uh, you could just simply add a link to another blog post. So we're going to add a link in here. Link options and we'll link it to another blog post with a video. And there we have it. We've just added a link and that should then tick to green. So I've now got a link. The slug for this page contains stop words. Now stop words are words such as in, of, at, um, or in this particular case it's referring to is, it, uh, is, and and. If you can take some of them out, that's handy, um, but to be honest it's not going to be too detrimental to your SEO score, uh, because largely because your uh, URL really should say what it is. You could say what is SEO and why important. You could adjust this. The slug I'll show you further down here. Um, click on that. Here's your slug and it's effectively the extension to the URL. Um, so you could try and amend this to get that but to be honest I've never known it to be bad news for your site and to be, and to be honest it's as long as your search term is in there you can do whatever you want with it. It's entirely up to you. Um, what you do. Next one up, no, the image on this page are missing out attributes. Now out is a, a, what's known as alternative text when somebody who is visually sighted um, hovers over it. The alternative text should tell, tell that person what the image is about. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this up here. I'm going to click on the image and click on edit. And what I'm going to do is just type that into there. But I'm also giving, going to give the image a caption. It's a great idea when you're writing blog posts or pages to put a caption under an image. Don't just put a random image. Give it some context. Uh, so let's give... Let's type that in and paste that in. And then we'll... type that in there. So it gives it a bit, gives the image a bit of context. And what I'm also going to do is click on this advanced options down here and once again type, copy in the um, the image, the uh, page title. So if you think about what we have here, three occasions we've got what is SEO. So we've got it in the caption, in the alternative text and also the image title attribute. Um, in terms of images, if you want them left, right and centre, you can have them here, or you can link your image to somewhere if you want to do that. It's entirely up to you, but I tend not to on blog posts and pages, unless you need it to go somewhere else. So let's just update that. Scroll down to the bottom. So we're ticking more green boxes. The meta description has been specified. Now here's the meta, your meta description is here, and it doesn't actually... Um, have anything in it. So what it will typically do is it will pick up the first 160 or characters from the body of your text. So we've got the SEO title is automatically picked up from the title of the post and the title of your website. This could end up being quite long so if this, if this is actually read in any way shape or form you would type it in here. What I typically do um, is copy in again the post title. What is SEO? What is SEO, and why is it important? Find out more in this useful blog, blog post. Okay, so this here is what people would see if they found it in in the search engines, and so it's important to try and make it into an advert that might encourage them to click. This, unfortunately this text here does us no favours whatsoever. Um, so we need to try and adjust this and we would do that in the meta description. So here we've got what is SEO and why is important? Find out more in this useful blog post. So what we're going to do is we're going to largely copy what's in the caption above. Ever wondered?
Okay, I'm just rambling now. Right, if you keep on going too long, then the the OST SEO will tell you, and it tells you that it's too long. So you and it literally, if you look at what's up here, it goes off the end of what's visible in the Google rankings. So we need to take that bit out. Make sure it reads well. It needs to say in, needs to speak to people in their language. Um, Try and make sure that it just and tries to encourage people to click on your um, blog post. And to be honest, we're pretty much, apart from this item here with the stop words, we've got a, as close as we can get um, to a full green light. Every bo green box, every green little tab ticked. Um, as we possibly can. In all honesty, in all the years I've been doing this, I've only ever once seen one blog post, um, just one, with every single one of these ticked. So don't panic if you don't get them all done. If you look at your SEO score up here, this is the use the, the OST indicator. It's good. You have got a green light there. So what we're going to do is going to save the draft of that because I'm going to go on to have a look at readability real quick. So. What we're going to do, now that's uh, saved as a draft, we'll have a look at readability because we have a red light over here. So what we're looking at here, what it tries to tell you is, to, is it looks at the language, the length of your sentences, the length of your paragraphs, whether your text is broken up particularly well, and it gives you some pointers. So it also takes a look at the language itself and gives you a, uh, a readability score. If it's a very technical post, you could have some very technical, long-winded terms in there, and this score might be quite low. I wouldn't worry about that if it is a technical post and you've, you know, you've got a lot of technical language in there. Um, so this is good for general reading, but it depends on your target audience. If you're, you know, if you're an engineer and you're writing an engineering post, this could well be quite low. Um, however, if you're trying to appeal to a mass market, uh, then you need to try and improve the language. And it does mean, to some extent, making the language quite clear. But I always take the view is, if you wouldn't say it to somebody, don't write it. If somebody asked you to explain this concept, try and think about what you would say to them rather than what you would write to them, because we often tend to overcomplicate things when we write. And that's not a problem, it's just the way most of us were taught how to write in English. So this here gives you an indicator. Some of the pa none of the paragraphs are too long, which is very good. And 59% of the sentences contain a transition word or phrase, which is great. A transition word is just where it goes, it connects dots, it connects two parts of a sentence. So. The text does not have any subheadings, add at least one subheading. So let's have a look through the text. Um, so let's put a subheading in. Um, let's type something in here. And I'm just going to make it a little bit arbitrary by typing in why bother. So if we highlight that, make it into a heading text. There's a subheading, and we should, yep, yeah, we've just ticked another one. So we've got a subheading, uh, which is great. 36.4 of the sentence contain more than 20 words. And again, if you're writing a technical post, this may not necessarily be a problem, um, because sometimes sentences can be long. But if you can break them up, um, then that would be great. So... It just literally goes through. If you can add some full stops here and break longer sentences into shorter sentences, like this one here is quite long. In fact, the whole paragraph is a single sentence. It's a single sentence. Uh, so if we could say, the idea behind is trying to ensure the website is found by searching something. If we put a full stop in there and add that word there, we've broken up that paragraph, that long sentence, into two shorter sentences. I don't know if it's going to make a big difference. Um, in fact, that hasn't moved at all. Let's just save draft and see if we can get, a, get it to move a little bit. So the readability has gone to orange. 39.1, um, that's 4 out of 10, really, contains 20 or more words. Again, go through it. If you can work out how to shorten the sentences by breaking them up into shorter sentences, please do that, it will help. The idea behind the readability is just to make sure that 
when somebody comes to your blog post, they get the maximum opportunity to understand what it is you're trying to tell them, and you get maximum readership. Because the, if you've got analytics installed in your pages uh, and on your website, the length of time somebody spends on your pages is also an indicator for how well your uh, pages and posts get bumped up the search rankings. If somebody's coming there, they're spending a lot of time on there, Google sees it as important and they give you more SEO scores, uh, more points and ticks in their uh, algorithms, and so that particular post gets moved up the search engines. Right, well in all honesty, that's about it. We've gone from uh, an, a nominal SEO score to a good one, walked you and talked you through everything you need to know for all of this stuff. If you have any questions, please write them in the comments below. Um, but uh, go out there and do it and win in the search engines.